Good morning. Welcome to Trinity Lutheran Church this morning on this first Sunday in Advent. It is good to see you this morning. My name is Fritz and I serve as the lead pastor here at Trinity. It's my joy to welcome you here this morning. Now, if you're new to our community, thank you for uh, being our guest. Thank you for joining us this morning and that we hope that when you leave here today that you feel God's love and that you feel inspired for the week ahead to share God's love with others. Uh, there are connection cards, so the purple or yellow cards in the pew racks in front of you or in the tra chair racks. We invite you to fill that out if you're comfortable doing so, so we can say thank you for being our guest. You can also fill it out electronically uh, using the QR code on page one of the bulletin. A special welcome to those on our online campus this morning. Welcome and thank you for tuning in today. On our website, trinitylansdale.com, trinitylansdale.com. If you go to the very bottom of the left-hand side of the page, you'll find a link uh, where you can, uh, this says weekly slash bulletin, and from there you can find a copy of today's worship service so you can fully participate with us in worship. For those of you on Facebook, our host, Marsha, will be sharing a link to fill out the connection card. That's a great way to let us know if you have a prayer request or you'd like a pastor to reach out or you just want to simply uh, let, let us know that you are joining us this morning uh, and tuning in as a part of our online campus. Today we begin the season of Advent, which is four weeks long, and I invite you to stand as you are able as we sing together the first verse of our lighting of the hymn. At every beginning, there is a yearning for the one who is coming. O Emmanuel, Make us we gather together to expect the unexpected and imagine the unimaginable. O Emmanuel, Make us Jesus came into our world announcing the kingdom. Make room for the advent of God. Make room to see the world turned upside down. Valleys will touch the sky. Mountains will be flattened. And we will all see it together. Let's make room for something new. Let's make room to see a world filled with justice, freedom, love, and life. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray together. Gracious God, you sent your Son, and you continue to send your Son, Jesus, into our world. And that's the kingdom you established at the dawn of creation. Open our eyes, hearts, and minds 
to your ongoing recreation of our world as you bring forth your kingdom. Engage us in the work of your Holy Spirit, loving and sacrificially, serving all your children everywhere. Amen. I invite the assembly to be seated as we prepare now to hear the word of God. reading from 1st Romans, the 13th chapter. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy, Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. The assembly is invited to be seated as we invite forward our children to come forward for the sermon on the steps this morning. Hey, good morning. How are you this morning? Good. Hey, good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you this morning and thank you for being here this morning. I like your tie. Like. Santa Claus wearing sunglasses. <laughs> and a snowy place. Good morning. Hello. So today starts a new church year. Do you remember what you do on New Year's Eve? Do you know what happens on New Year's Eve? Go ahead. It's a new year. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys have any traditions that you do as a family? What? No, well, that's Christmas morning, but a New Year's. New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, right? December 31st? Go ahead. You stay up until midnight, right? And then, you, do you watch the ball drop on television in New York City? Or maybe you go and see fireworks somewhere? You bake pots and pans together and to celebrate the new year. Yeah. Well, today, in the church, we started a new year. The first Sunday of Advent is a brand new church year. And it begins with the season of Advent, which is the color blue. And you can see here my blue stall or the, the blue pyramids or we have lots of blue banners hanging around and that blue symbolizes a season of preparation or of anticipation as we wait to celebrate Christmas and Jesus' birth. And over here, the Lentz family, if you look to your left, is our, we lit our first candle.
candle today. And each week, we're going to light a different candle as we get closer to Christmas Eve. So each of the four Sundays, we'll light a candle together as we continue to talk about what does it look like that Jesus Christ is going to be born in this earth. We know that Jesus was already born, but we start off our new year, our new church year, by anticipating and looking forward to Jesus returning, not just as a baby, but when Jesus returns uh, a second time and it sets up his reign here on earth, or his kingdom here, here. So, we're going to be learning and talking about this Advent. What does it mean that Jesus Christ is born? And that Jesus Christ comes into our world and comes into our lives. And this week we talked about how Jesus announces. Jesus announces that God is, God is breaking forth. That new things are happening in our lives and in our church. And that we get to be on the lookout where we see God and where we see Jesus in our world. So during Kids Praise today with Deacon Jane, you're going to talk more about that. And you're going to have a conversation today and sing some songs and spend some time with Theo looking at what does it mean that God's kingdom come. And not only in Advent, at the beginning of this new church year, but all year long. Okay? So let's bow our heads and we are going to say a repair prayer and the congregation will help us. Dear Jesus, we thank you that at the beginning of another new year that you promise to be with us. Help us this week to share your love. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys so much and have a really great week. And Deacon Jane is over here and she has her hand up. Yep. Take care. Have a good week. God's grace and peace and compassion be with you this week. Amen. Uh, today, as I just shared with our children, we begin a brand new church year. We enter into the season of Advent and we're starting a new sermon series. Our sermon series is called Your Kingdom Come. And we're looking at what does it look like that, what do we talk about? What do we mean when we say um, uh, uh, and talk about the kingdom of God or the reign of God or the kingdom of heaven? What are we talking about as a church or as a congregation when we refer to those phrases? And so Advent is a, is a time where we celebrate that Jesus Christ was born uh, in, in human flesh, that one time event that happened, but that we celebrate every year as we continue to remember and celebrate that day, but also as we look forward with anticipation, with expectation to the day when Christ will return uh, for the second coming, for when Jesus Christ returns here on earth. And so Advent, we live in a time of now and not yet. A time of here and in the future where we celebrate Jesus Christ both past, present, and future. And so we're talking about for the next four weeks, what is this kingdom that Jesus announces? And that's where we are at today in Mark chapter 1. Next week we'll talk about what does it mean to build the kingdom in in Advent 3, we'll talk about what it means to serve in the kingdom. And then in the fourth week of Advent, we'll talk about how do we embrace the future of God's kingdom. And then of paralleling that, during our faith formation time, everyone's welcome to join a conversation about the kingdom. And a book that you, everyone was invited to read, and if you haven't read it, that's okay. You can still come to the conversation about God's kingdom and what does that look like and a time for us to talk and discern together. And I'll share a little bit more about that. But in our gospel lesson today in Mark chapter 1, we hear that Jesus announces the kingdom of God. Jesus has just returned from spending 40 days out in the wilderness where he's been tempted by Satan. 
Our gospel picks up and tells us that John the Baptist has been arrested and he has been put in prison and that Jesus, at least in Mark's gospel, begins his ministry in Galilee, not in Judea, like some of the other gospels start Jesus' ministry. And it's there in Galilee that Jesus proclaims that the kingdom of God has come near. And so repent and believe in the good news. But what is the kingdom that Jesus is talking about? I mean, after all, we pray for it every single week that we gather in worship, right? We actually pray for it at almost every wedding that happens. We pray for it at every funeral. Our congregational council ends their meetings praying for the kingdom. Right? Most of our ministry meetings end with praying for the kingdom. Right? In the Lord's Prayer, your kingdom come here on earth as it is in heaven. But what is God's kingdom and why is it so important? Well, 31 times in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus refers to the kingdom of heaven. And 51 times in the other uh, in, in the four Gospels, we read about the kingdom of God, or the kingdom, God's kingdom, which tells us 90 plus times that Jesus places a heavy focus on helping his disciples and his listeners understand what Jesus is referring to, or what he's referring to when he talks about the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. In comparison, Jesus talks about the church three times, which seems to make sense to me that Jesus cares a lot more about bringing the kingdom to people than it is about getting people to heaven when they die. And so what is the kingdom? In the 1520s, Martin Luther was struggling to how do you help parents teach their children? How do parents help teach the faith to children? And so he wrote a pamphlet, and he actually wrote in that pamphlet, what is the kingdom? That pamphlet came to what we call today as the large catechism. And this is what Martin Luther wrote in the 1520s when he was asked, what is the kingdom? Uh, in, prep, in writing this brochure, he writes, nothing other than what we learned in the creed, God sent his son, Jesus Christ, our world. Jesus, let me start over. God sent his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, into the world to redeem and deliver us from the devil's power. He sent him to bring us to himself and to govern us as a king of righteousness, life, salvation against sin, death, and an evil conscience. For this reason, he has also given his Holy Spirit, who is to bring these things home to us by his holy word and to illumine and strengthen us in the faith by his power. Now, I think as Americans, when we tend to think of kingdoms, we think of our British friends. And we have this image of the crown sitting atop Queen Elizabeth's coffin. We think of King Charles. We think of things like the Han Dynasty or the British, um, uh, the, the Roman Empire or the Persian Empire. We think of this violent takeover of a group of people or of land as they build an empire that's a geographical area or spans and wipes away uh, cultures. But that's not God's kingdom. For God's kingdom is here now and not yet. As Lutherans, we live in this tension that God's kingdom is here right now and not yet. God's kingdom, as Martin Luther talks about it, is when Jesus Christ comes to us, not only as a small baby boy, but also in his death and in his resurrection. God's kingdom is set up. It, it's begun and not yet finished. It won't be finished until Christ returns again. And as Luther talks about it, as Martin Luther understands it, God's kingdom, much like the disciples and the Apostle Paul, thought it would be within their lifetime. 
How much bad can the world get before God returns and establishes his forever kingdom? And God's kingdom is much different than human kingdoms. There's some similarities, but they're much different. That God's kingdom is eternal. Human kingdoms are not. God's kingdom uh, is a place where the lowly are lifted up. Right? And we'll hear this in a few weeks as we hear Mary's song. God's kingdom is a place where the oppressed and the marginalized are welcomed with open arms, not turned away for who they are. God's kingdom, the kingdom that Jesus comes to announce, describes who God is and what God is like. I think that there's 91 different references to this kingdom of God because it can be hard to describe. There's not one story, there's not one illustration that can explain the infinite God when we as human beings are finite. Martin Luther goes on to understand the kingdom of God in two realms or in two different aspects. Martin Luther calls it the right hand of the kingdom and the left hand of the kingdom. The right hand of the kingdom is the kingdom of grace. It's the kingdom that Jesus Christ um, establishes where God forgives sinners, where God saves humans and saves creation through the redeeming work of Jesus Christ. There is nothing that we can do to earn our salvation. There's not enough good works we can accomplish in the right hand kingdom to be declared holy or good, for that is done for us through the life of Jesus, the death of Jesus, the resurrection of Jesus, and the gift of the Holy Spirit who strengthens us in faith. The right hand of the kingdom. The right hand of the kingdom deals in our vertical, our vertical relationship with God and with the triune God. On the other side, the left hand side of the kingdom is the temporal kingdom. Jesus Christ, when he comes to announcing the kingdom, sets up human institutions and helping us to, to live in a society, to live in humanity that love one another, that care for one another, that support those who are not able to support themselves, right? So the institutional church, we are organized to do the work of, 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 of God in a very finite way. So we have a congregational council and a shared leadership team, the way that we organize ourselves. God gives children parents to help them learn about the faith. Healthy families right, is a part of the left hand of the kingdom. Good governments that help promote and strive for justice and peace for all people, the left hand side of the kingdom. Laws that teach us how to care and love one another, the left hand side of the kingdom. The left hand side, or the left realm of the kingdom, teaches us how we live in relationship with one another and to one another. And then as Christians, we find ourselves in the middle, at the intersection of both of those realms. For we know the good news. We know of God's love for us. Let me give you an example. Imagine, I know none of this would have happened to you, but imagine you get in trouble with your parents, right? You've done something wrong. I know it never happens at Trinity, but you've done something wrong. And your mom or your dad says to you, you're in trouble. I'm going to have to punish you because you've done something wrong. And you say, because you now learn in church about the two kingdoms, you can't punish me because Jesus forgives all my sins and you have to forgive me too. And mom, who was also hearing that sermon, says, yes, but there are consequences for your actions. Who's right? Who's right? Both. Because as Christians, we live at the intersection of both the right hand and the left hand kingdoms of God. And that when Jesus comes to announce the kingdom, it is to announce that God wants all human beings to have abundant life. Jesus comes to bring life, we're told in the Gospels, and bring it abundantly. 
That is why God sends Jesus Christ to us. is so that we can all experience abundant life. Not just there when we die, but in the here and now. And the way that we treat one another and the ways that we honor the divine and and that we are all created in the image of God. That is the call of the followers of Jesus Christ, is to help others experience abundant life, holy life, the life that God offers and wants all people to experience. Jesus Christ comes announcing the kingdom of God, not to scare people, not to frighten, but to invite For right after this, Jesus begins to call his disciples in Mark's gospel to a new way of living, a way that turns the kingdom from our human perspective upside down and establishes and says this is enough for all people to have abundant life, that God promises to be with us and to walk with us. And this Advent... We're talking about what does that mean? How does that impact our lives as people of faith, as followers of Jesus Christ? How is the kingdom of God breaking open in the here and in the now? Not just later, but here, with us, amongst us. That's the call, I think, of discipleship. Not to be worried about What is the church institutionally doing? But how are we loving and serving others so that God has room to to be at work, that God can break open God's kingdom in ways that we cannot even imagine? And sometimes we limit ourselves in doing that. And then the season of Advent rolls around and calls us back calls us back to remembering why God enters into the world in the first place. Not because he has to, but because God wants to. God wants to show to us again and again that he will go to whatever lengths that God needs to, to show and to break open our lives, to remind us that we are called to live abundantly, Last week, if you were here, the bishop talked about this in our question and answer, that Jesus comes so that we can have life and have it abundantly. And so, people of God, welcome to Advent. Welcome to Advent, where we pray together, your kingdom come. Jesus, we need your kingdom. Martin Luther talks about in the small catechism that it's not because we have to pray, because it's going to happen regardless but because we need the Holy Spirit to strengthen us in our faith. For it's hard sometimes to be a Christian. It is hard to continue to see people walking into bars and Walmarts and universities and taking the lives of people with weapons. To continue to see people have diagnoses and, 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 and be told again and again that God doesn't love them, that God's not with them. And that God's kingdom breaks open and says, no. You are my child. You are my children whom I love. And I come to bring life. Or, as Tom just read for us in Romans, because salvation is drawing nearer to us than when we first became believers. God's kingdom is nearer to us now than it has ever been before. And for that, we say thank you, God, for being with us not just this first week of Advent, but for all of the weeks that are to come. Amen. I invite you to stand as we sing together. My Lord, what a morning.
As we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for a world that yearns for new hope. Lord, in your mercy. children everywhere cry out for mercy. Awaken the global church to the urgent needs of our time. Break down barriers of culture and custom and unite people of all faiths in your redemptive and healing work. The earth's beauty and abundance is your gift. Teach us your ways of sharing resources and caring for life. Guard fragile habitats, preserve the wild places, and protect endangered plants and animals. Lord, in your mercy. God of peace, you judge the nations. Beat our weapons into tools for serving the neighbor. Strengthen the resolve of all who work for an end to war. We, pr we pray for lasting peace in the land of Jesus' birth. God of community, you are present when we gather in your name. Guide Trinity in calling our associate pastor. Give wisdom to congregational councils, call committees, and ministry leaders. Keep us alert to unexpected opportunities for mission. Lord, in your mercy, God of loving kindness, you desire fullness of life for everyone. Fill those who hunger, comfort the grieving, and attend to those near death. Bring help and hope to any who are sick or needing your care, especially Charles, Cynthia, Melissa, those on our prayer list listed in the bulletin and those we name aloud are in the silence of our hearts. For those mourning the loss of life, home, and livelihood in the aftermath of the recent earthquake in Indonesia, for the loved ones of those killed and for others who were injured in the multiple mass shootings around our country this past week, for students, teachers, seminarians, professors, and support and administrative staff, preparing for an end of the fall semester. For all of those who live with disabilities, that as we remember International Day of Persons with Disabilities this week, that you help us remember that we are all made in your image. Help us to embrace one another as you do, beloved and blessed, not in need of fixing, but in need of authentic welcome. We give thanks for the lives of the faithful who now rest in you, especially Martha Ruman, Jim Piston, and Penny Piston. We trust that you will bring us into the company of all the saints with rejoicing. By your spirit, gather our prayers and join them 
with the prayers of all your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The peace of Christ is with you always. I invite you to share that peace with those around. As you finish sharing the piece, I invite you to be seated. As we continue in our musical offering, Life Song, just a moment, is going to sing, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. As a reminder, there are baskets here in the front, offering baskets, that if you would like to place your financial gift in there, we'd like to take a moment to say thank you. You can also give electronically with the QR code listed in your bulletin, or for those online on our website, trinitylandsale.com, by clicking now the Give Now button. You'll notice that online and in the Lansdale Lutheran that we are now receiving honorariums and sponsorships for Christmas and that you can do those either by filling out the sheet of paper that was in the Lansdale Lutheran or by doing so online. Let us continue together by hearing O Come, O Come, Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, you make the desert bloom and send springs of water to thirsty ground. Receive these simple gifts of bread, wine, and money, and make us messengers of your mercy and love for all in need of your healing and justice. We ask this through Christ our <coughs> Savior. Amen. As we prepare now to celebrate the Holy Eucharist, 
remind you that uh, there will indeed be four communion stations for distribution for, on each of the uh, transepts, and then there will be two here at the head of the aisle here in the, uh, in the nave. Okay. Please know that for those of you who prefer that we do have on the brown tables in front of each, uh, the, we do have uh, gluten-free wafers as well as sterile, sterile packets of uh, grape juice and wine, and, and the wafer as well as small glasses of grape juice for those of you, non-alcoholic grape juice, for those of you who prefer. If there are any of you who do prefer, for some reason, not to actually receive communion, please know that you're invited to come forward to receive a blessing from one of the communion assistants. Now I invite you to please stand as we begin the celebration with a great thanksgiving. My friends, the Lord is with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right. Our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom we will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels in the church on earth, the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and we join in their unending hymn. Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying this cup is the new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Be strong. Do not fear. Here is your God who has come to save you. Thanks be to God. I invite the assembly now to be seated. Please know that, uh, as always, we remind you that this is not... Trinity's table, it is not the Lutheran table, it is not the bishop's table, but rather this is God's table. So please know that all who are gathered here tonight, today, are invited to come forward to receive the Eucharist. Body of Christ given for you, the body of Christ given for you.
strengthen and preserve you unto eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. Faithful God, in this meal you have remembered your mercy, bringing heaven to earth in the body and blood of Christ. As we wait for the day when all your promises will be fulfilled, sustain us and strengthen us by this holy mystery. Guide us toward your promised future, coming to birth in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this morning for our first Sunday in Advent. A couple of quick reminders. There is kids praise uh, and, and, and crew in social hall. That will be about a 40, uh, 40 minute time of communion specifically designed for families and those with young children. If you don't know where social hall is, when you take either one of the hallways out of the sanctuary, go right to the very end of the building as far as you can go and social hall is in on your left and deacon jane will be back there to lead us this morning please take your weekly home with you it's full of a lot of information including midweek advent worship services that will start this wednesday at 7 30 p.m in the chapel we will be singing holy oh yeah holy Holden evening prayer uh, together, and we will have a guest speaker each week. This week's guest speaker is Lansdale Police Chief Michael Trail, who will be with us sharing about where he see God's kingdom breaking open uh, in our community here in Lansdale and beyond. Each week we will hear from a different first responder. The Lansdale Lutherans are now available. If you didn't pick yours up last week, they are in the communication rack. On the back side, you'll notice and find our Christmas Eve schedule, as well as our tree lighting happening next Sunday afternoon. Prior to the tree lighting, beginning at 4.30, we are going to have a congregational dinner together in Heisen Hall. This will be our first congregational dinner since the COVID-19 pandemic, so it's been a few years. Uh, but I trust everyone remembers how to eat, and, uh, and you're invited to join us in Heisen in Heis Hall. We do ask uh, that you do um, RSVP for the dinner or the crafts that will be made uh, just so we have enough food. And then at about 6.45, everyone will be invited out front where we will have caroling, where we will light the trees together. It's a great thing to invite your neighbors or your friends to uh, just to see the church a little bit and uh, to hear some of our choirs and get a foretaste of the beautiful music that they will hear on Christmas Eve. It is with joy to invite Andrea forward to share a little bit with us for our singing telegrams. Singing Telegrams is a ministry that has happened here at Trinity for about 15 years. This is where many of you have purchased a singing telegram for a homebound member um, or friend, and we've gone out. Many of the kids sitting behind me have been doing it probably for about 15 years, some of them, um, and um, they have powerful memories of watching um, people burst into tears as we visit them and deliver a song. Um, the power of music is very um, incredible. One of the things that we've noticed, though, over the past couple of years is that as we sing and deliver to one person, others in a facility might wander closer and say, what's going on? What's happening? Could you come and sing to this person or that person? And so this year, we've made a little bit of a change. We're delivering singing telegrams to six facilities um, in our area, and we are um, delivering them to hopefully a large gathering of folks from that facility rather than to just a specific person. And so we're hoping to spread the joy and the power of music much wider and broader. And so because of that, we've dropped the price there's a 50% sale going on. Today is the last day. They are just $10. For that $10, you fill out a card, and we will deliver it to whomever comes um, to listen to us sing. And so um, we hope that you will come and support us. This benefits the uh, Joyful Choristers and Life Song Singers, our music ministry for our youth. Thank you. 
And where do they where do they get the sale? Where do they get the Out Mercedes? in the lobby, there is a okay. table. You can uh, stop by and visit us there. Okay. Is Luke selling them today? Is Luke there today? Luke might be there today. He is a very good suggestive salesperson. So, Pastor Bill, you want to tell us about a trip to go visit Bethlehem? One more. We're going to Bethlehem. No, 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 not that Bethlehem. <laughs> not that Bethlehem. <laughs> We are aware that so, how much so many of you do here at Trinity, and it's time that I'm going to say thank you, thank you, thank you, and we're going to invite you to come for a day. We planned a trip going up to Bethlehem, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, not, not the other one, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, on Sunday, December the 11th, a week after next. We'll be leaving the church here at 11, or, yeah, at 11, at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. We're going to go up visit the Chris Kindle Mart for three, about three hours. Then we're gonna get back on the bus and we're gonna cross the river and go into the historic area of Bethlehem. And we'll, uh, a tour guide will get on the bus and give us a tour of historic Bethlehem, all the historic sites, the lights. We'll go into the Moravian area and then go take a trip up to the, uh, what they call the mountain, uh, to the star of, of Bethlehem, the history of that. That's the week after next. Julie Menzo is out in the, lo uh, in the lobby. She'll be taking uh, names for reservations. We do need reservations. We need 52 people to go fill our bus and things. So we hope that you'll come. This is a day for you. This is a day just to relax. All so much is going on. Just to relax and enjoy the season and step back and just say, no, this day is for me. And it's for and to, to enjoy the day with each other and a fellowship day of, at, with, uh, with the folks here at Trinity. So we invite you to join us uh, to, for that a very, a very special and a fun, fun day to visit Bethlehem. With that, I invite you to please stand for our sending blessing. God, the eternal word who dwells with us in Jesus and who holds us in the grace of the Holy Spirit, Bless you now and forever. Amen. I invite you now to join us as we sing our sending hymn, Your Lamps Trimmed and Burning. Christ is near.